Hey everybody, it's Tony Caldwell. Welcome to another episode of Uncaptive Agent, where we're talking about the future of insurance distribution, specifically the future for the independent agency over the next three to five years. And as Jeff, my guest today, and I are visiting, it's late uh, or early February, I should say, 2021. So our five-year horizon is out to 2026. Today I have with me, my guest is Jeff McIntosh, who is a commercial insurance producer with Energy Insurance in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, um, I want to make a couple comments about Jeff and then uh, as an, by way of introduction, then I'll let him uh, take it off. But Jeff is a super successful commercial insurance producer. And he has been named for the last two or three years by one of the prominent industry publications, Business Insurance Magazine, as one of the top commercial producers in the United States. In 2020 or 2019, Jeff, you'll correct me, I think you were in the top 65 uh, commercial insurance producers. So if, um, if for no other reason I want to talk to Jeff as somebody who's really successful in commercial insurance, been around for a while and plans to be into the future. But in addition to that, Jeff has written a very uh, comprehensive and impressive book on uh, how to, on, uh, on the technical side of our business. Really, it's a book, uh, Jeff, as I understand it, designed to help teach younger producers what they need to know and what they need to gather to do a fabulous job of presenting a risk to an underwriter. So with that, Jeff McIntosh, welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. Um, the, the book and you know the, the short version, and there's nothing short about anything I ever do, so, so strap on folks. Um, it's all the things that I wish that someone would have taught me when I started. The things that I had to learn on my own um, that, that wash out most of the people that, that come into our, our business as a producer, especially a, a commercial producer. Um, there's a whole lot of, of information and knowledge uh, about policy forms and, and those sorts of things. But, but what's lacking is what do you do with that? What, how, do you, how do you match the client with that? How do you, you know, um, put that into force? How do you make it effective? um you know the policy but also how do you get a good quote um you know when i started we we really thought and there was a, another gentleman here is now our president uh mark kelder and we used to talk all the time you know if we just had carriers if we just had enough volume with carriers that that they would write business for us they would write more things for us and and we were wrong it wasn't about that uh, it was about the quality of the applications and the information that we were giving them. You know, uh, Jeff, uh, not to interrupt, but well, actually I did interrupt. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, uh, you know, I was just on a call last week with a bunch of agents uh, on behalf of one of the largest commercial property and casualty companies in the country. Um, and the question that they wanted to ask was, you know, what's your biggest challenge in the next five years? to a person, it was the same answer that they've given on that same call for the last three years at least, which is talent. And it's expected that in this next five year period of time, we're gonna lose over half the people if they retire on schedule in our business. So uh, bringing new talent into this business and then teaching them what you've had to learn the hard way and what I've learned the hard way uh, rapidly so they can take uh, the place of folks who are leaving is gonna be critical. Um, I was interested when we talked before, you know, as you went looking for resources and even at the local university where you live there in Lexington, you couldn't find any. Um, tell us a little bit about your, just the dearth of good information on this topic that, that you found. Yeah, well, um, that's kind of why I wrote the book, really. Um, you know, we have, I mean, listen, I, I've mentored um, agents for 25 years and except for one that I have currently that I was able to give the book to, they have every one of them failed. Hmm. It's not because I don't know what they need to know. It's there's a few problems. I'm not a teacher. I'm a commercial insurance agent. I don't have the time to put them through a course, uh, nor do they. 
because when we hire them, of course, we put pressure on them immediately. Sell, sell, sell. Why aren't you calling people? Why aren't you? This is why you're failing. You don't talk to anyone. Um, I also had no resource. I really didn't know exactly what it is they weren't connecting on. Uh, we all have amnesia, right? We, we don't remember how hard it was. We want to forget that as quickly as we can. Uh, but also, it's kind of trade secret. Um, now, I sincerely wanted them to succeed, but many people that become mentors, they don't want to be. I mean, you think about inside an agency, I can compete with any agent out there except agents here. So the more agents that we hire and the more agents that we bring in here is competition for me that I can't overcome. I can't call on their accounts. I can't work on accounts that they're working on. If we're a, an agency that likes contractors, well now adding more agents going after contractors is just you know shrinking you know, my pond. Um, but it doesn't work very well, but that's what most of us do. Or we train salespeople and we've done that. We've hired every kind of salesperson in the world, male, female, it doesn't make any difference. That we're successful at sales, it doesn't translate over here. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit later about what I think the future is and some of this insure tech uh, and those sorts of things. Um, and, I'll, and I'll tell you exactly why, because it's not the same product. The insurance product is a very, very, very different product than any other product uh, that's out there. But, um, but you're right, I did. I had an epiphany. I said, we've got a college 30 miles up the road, Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond. It's one of the top five, I think it was 2020 maybe, uh, AM Best did a review of all the colleges. Eastern Kentucky was in the top five insurance program. We hired uh, a couple of kids, actually four, two were producers. Um, they came out and they'd never heard of an Accord app. They didn't understand, you know, rating or classification codes or any these smart, bright kids. I mean, absolutely cream of the crop. And I didn't have a mechanism to try and teach them that. I, I knew they need to learn how to complete an app and I try to bring them in my office, but I don't have all these hours of the day um, to do that. They got frustrated uh, and they quit. So I went back to the Dean and I said, what are you teaching these kids? He got him for four years. Uh, and, uh, and the first dean that was there, you know, well, we have a high placement, so you don't know what you're talking about. Thanks. Go ahead and send us a check. We, we, we're glad you're supporting the program. Um, you know, thanks. Write us a check. Uh, I got introduced to the new dean in September of 2018. And she said, well, yeah, I heard your sponsor. And what do you think of our program? And I said, well, you're not teaching them what they need to know. And, and it was sort of rude and I didn't mean it that way, but I've kind of had enough of it. And she engaged me. She looked me right in the face and said, tell me why. Uh, so I followed up with an email. She gave me her email address and I sent her 48 pages of Accord applications. And I said, this is what they have to know. And that's a mid-size account. That, that sounds like a lot. That's not a lot. That's just what we do every day. And uh, she said, well, I, I want to, you know, I want to meet with you. Let's talk more about this. So she invited me to lunch and I brought along my, you know, my pause manual and, you know, my scopes manual. And I wanted to show her the classifications. I said, it's not just these apps. You've got to know what to put in them. Um, and she's, she said, well, there's a problem, Jeff, with why we don't teach this. And now she has a PhD in insurance. Right? She's 50 some years old. She's been doing this her whole life. This is her life's work. And I um, said, so what's the problem? She said, well, there's no book. There's no book that teaches this, that talks about these things. Um, and I made my fatal error. I said, well, I can write that book. Yeah. Um, forgetting that I'm dyslexic, forgetting that I'm not an author, forgetting that I barely made it through English. It was a mercy, right, to pass me because they just seen enough of me. Um, so it, it took me 11 months uh, to do it. Um, I knew the task involved underwriters because that's, you know, and, and it's a training manual for underwriters as well because they have to know everything we know about the application. Um, so I used them as my content editors. And there were five different underwriters that, uh, that reviewed my work. And I said, well, what's missing? What, what did I say wrong? You know, those sorts of things. So it's a long process. 
So, so Jeff, let's, um, you know, let's talk for just a minute about, uh, so obviously no book. I mean, that's clear from your conversation with the Dean, but in a, in a global sense, and you've had, you said four, four folks come into your agency and fail because uh, in large part, the training really wasn't there. The information they needed to learn wasn't ready for them to absorb it. From the universities. Yeah, from yeah. the universities. Well, we got a lot more than that. So, so every agency out there, I mean, every agent that's listening to us, it's in the agency side of the business, um, you know, they've got the same problem. It's like, how do you train folks? Um, and so now there's this resource. And obviously, there's a, a tremendous need to train new people coming into the business. So have you been um, working with folks or had conversations with people about uh, how best to use the resource? Some. Um the, the final version, I finally got it completed editing and all that uh, was July of 2020. Uh, now I had some a little harder to read, and you know, not for me because you know phonetics is great. But um, you know, one gentleman in our office that I work with that was struggling, um, you know, I had him going through it, and it was kind of my test case, right? Okay, you you need help. Um, and he would come and meet with me once a week and and talk about it and and, it, and he understood it see i'm i'm an insurance agent okay i wrote what i know how to do and i know how to to write commercial insurance policies if that's what you're interested in learning that's what i told you that's what i wrote about um the interesting thing that he came back and he said you know this has given me a lot of confidence now when i'm calling people to try and set up appointments, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm talking about now. And when I'm asking him questions and information, I'm finding what will separate me, right? The wedges, you hear, hear the wedge sales model. Well, this is written by a, a very smart gentleman, a very nice gentleman. It's never sold an insurance policy. So- Randy Schwanz. Yeah, great guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and he'll tell you, you know, I'm not an insurance guy, that, that's not what I do. Um, and it's not that there's no value there, there is, but somebody needs to be talking about what the wedges are. You know, but that's what the universities didn't have. They have, we have let them down as an industry. It's not the university's fault. It's our fault that we didn't come back and say, hey, you need to change your curriculum. And if you think of people like me, I mean, it's a miracle that it occurred to me. And I was dumb enough to volunteer to do it. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, I hated about every moment of it, but I said I was going to do it. So I did it. But that's the only reason I did it. I shot my mouth off and I had to pay for it. So, so Jeff, I talked to lots of folks about where we're headed as an industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of things are, are uh, encouraging to me. The first is I have yet to talk to somebody who doesn't think that the future uh, includes uh, agents. In other words, everybody believes that regardless of how we move along with technologies, people still want a relationship with somebody they trust, and they want a relationship with somebody that knows what he or she is talking about and gives them really good advice, uh, and they don't think that can be replaced with artificial intelligence. So, you know, it's sort of back to the point of the book, which is that, you know, uh, you've tried to put in a concentrated place uh, a place to get that information and, and really to get people off on the uh, on the right foot. I'm curious, you've been in the business since the 80s. Um, so a while, you have some experience, shall we say. Um, do you feel like uh, as an industry that we're doing a lesser job than maybe we were a couple of decades ago in preparing people to be successful in commercial insurance? Or is it just kind of the same old, same old? You know, we're, we're Define for me the ground that we've got to come from. Uh, bearing ground, uh, I think for the last 10, if not 15 years, um, we are not training people anymore to be agents. We're training them to be salespeople. Um, I think some of the growth, some of the mega agencies that are you know, out there buying, that are basically just uh, you know, stock portfolios, uh, have, have aided in that considerably um, because the people at the top were never agents and they don't know what the job is. So, so they see producer as salesperson and they think, oh, well, we understand sales. This is not sales. 
I mean, it's hard to say, you know, well, we get paid to sell something. I get paid to write something. Um, our product is a legal contract. We negotiate a legal contract between two parties. It's not a product like a television set or a car or a house or a dress or anything of that nature. Uh, it's not priced that way. Um, I mean, it's, it's a product that most of the people buy, hope they never need, never have to use. They're buying it because they're required to buy it. And most people that have a policy don't even know what it says. You know, so, it um, can't be, um, I mean, people understand value. People buy on value, right? They don't understand price. They understand quality. With insurance policy, they understand price. They do not understand quality. And they can't even take their policy home, read it, and know what it means. So, so agencies are doing a good job of teaching and training. And, and again, back to the experience I had last week, you know, the, and, I, and I hear this a lot, actually. You know, agents are begging insurance companies to do this training for them. But to your point, the, the insurance company sees this whole thing from the, from the small end of the telescope, if you will, right? I mean, in other words, they're not really uh, suited very well for teaching agents what you're talking about. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to give you an example. Um, Hartford, fantastic company. Actually, I served on their Jonathan Trumbull board uh, in, in Kentucky many, many years ago. Uh, they're great people. I really like the Hartford people. They have a Hartford School of Insurance. Uh, we sent four people to that, four different people, not, not the students, okay? Um, they were there for two weeks for their producer training. They came back with manuals that would choke a horse. I, I mean, I could barely you know, handle the damn things. And it's eight hours a day for, for two weeks. And uh, our folks came back and, and I've reviewed the manuals because they came to me and they said, look at all this. And it's great information and it's things you need to know, but there's no way in hell you're going to learn that in two weeks. You're not going to do it. Uh, and they also don't talk about completing an application. They didn't know what to do with any of that information. It was way the hell too much information. And they came back to me and said, okay, can you tell us what we're supposed to be doing? Um, that's like, planting a new tree, putting all the water it's going to need for a year on it in the first two weeks and wondering why in the hell it died. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what most of these uh, insurance carriers programs are. And Hartford has a good one, except for the fact it's really of no use. Yeah. It's really of no use. So the uh, truth is, I mean, as you see it going forward to replace all these people that, that we need to bring into the business, like it or not, um, agents are going to have to do it themselves. And if you're in a local agency, uh, not a not a national uh, private equity backed firm, to, to your earlier point, um, you see that that we've got to do it ourselves. Yes, uh, I have been talking um, with a company, and and maybe talking to another uh, about. I've been you know biting at them and saying, you need to train your agents. And it's not just, you know, a nice thing to do, right? Um, when, when I was writing the book, as I mentioned, I used underwriters as my content editors. Well, they gave me a lot of feedback that didn't have anything to do with what I wrote. Um, you know, the main thing, and they all came back saying the same, do you know how much, Jeff, do you know how much of my day I spend with applications that are incomplete, that I'm chasing information that should have been on here. Um, the companies are losing a lot of productive time from, from very smart people that are getting smaller and smaller, harder to find as well, uh, because they're the ones trying to train agents. They're not suited to do it. They don't have a book to do it, and it's wasting their time. Um, yeah. On that point, Jeff, you know, I talked, you mentioned Hartford. I, I had uh, a senior vice president for Hartford Commercial Lines as an earlier guest on the podcast and uh, talking to him about, you know, this the fact that, that insurance companies really have a cost issue they've got to grapple with. And I, and I said to him, you know, how do carriers, how are they going to 
look at agents in the future? How does that change? And, and one of the things he said is right to your point, which is that um, the amount of money that an agent costs a carrier to do business with them is going to bear direct relationship even more. I mean, so in the past, carriers have said, okay, how much business do you produce? What's your retention ratio? And what's your profitability with us? Those are the three key factors. He said, but the fourth in the new in a newer one, it's evolving apparently at, at Hartford and other companies, is what does the agent cost to do business with compared to other people? So do uh, do the agents in, in, in the agency at, at hand here, are they using the technology that the carrier provides as an example? Um, and another would be, you know, do they waste our time uh, chasing them down for information because they don't know how to fill out apps? And if they do, we don't care how much business they give us, we don't want them. So apparently from the carrier perspective, what you're talking about is really important and is changing how they view agencies increasingly over time. Yeah, it's not a new product, uh, problem rather. Uh, what's new is I've actually got a solution. Um, you know, it, it's a start. I'm working with the uh, University of Texas, Dallas, and um, uh, he's going through and he's he's trying to write classes. So I've, I've segmented the book into so many pages and then identified, you know, things to highlight or, ex, or expand upon. So it needs a companion, you know. Uh, it you know, it needs uh, some podcasts, you know, asynchronous courses that people could just kind of watch uh, along with. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the agency of the future, we need smarter people. We, need, we don't need to hire 10 people in order to keep two. And that's what we've been doing. Right. Um, you know, what carriers are, are chasing is, you know, it's, it's coming up, right? When they get their bonuses in April, what's gonna happen? A lot of them are leaving. As soon as they get paid their bonus, they've got another deal waiting on them and they're going to leave. So carriers are having the same problem, retaining people. Um, you know, we've got to become agents again. We've got to become insurance professionals again. Um, and that, that comes with education. That comes with understanding. Uh, we've also got to adjust to the fact that we need to turn the speed down a little bit. They're not ready for the speed. Now, I am. Um, you know, I can handle it. I love the innovation because the innovation allows me to do even more. Um, but we've got people and we're, we're giving them tools and we're moving them so fast. I mean, you can't learn my book in a year. I mean, a, a year is minimum. If you're really going to learn it, really be able to apply it, and then you have to build upon it. You know, it's the foundation. It's not everything. It's the foundation. So well, you know, we've got to change this time frame of when people do in a year or 18 months or three years, you know, be producing hundred or $150,000. It's not realistic. You know, I started uh, my career a long time ago as well, um, maybe not quite as far back as you, uh, but I remember saying to people, you know, uh, along the way that I didn't really feel like I was a competent commercial lines producer. In other words, competent, I could answer clients' questions, fill out everything correctly, knew the coverage is, you know, cold, all that kind of stuff for five or six years. So yeah. Are, you, yeah. are you saying that you feel like that or using a resource like the one you developed will actually shortcut that, that cycle and make somebody a competent commercialized producer in two or three years? Absolutely, but not just that. Um, someone that actually knows what they're doing. What, what I wrote about is how I write business, how I take it away from other agents. They make mistakes. You're going back to the wedge, to, to lovely Randy. Right. He's right. You know, there's lots of pain there. And if you don't know where to find it and don't know how to discover it, you have no shot. You can get all the appointments in the world. You can smooth talk your way. And it's not easy to do. But then you have to perform. If you don't get a good quote from an underwriter, which you can't fool, uh, you have nothing to sell. Right. And that's where we've fallen short. That's why 75% or more fail, and they fail because they quit. Yeah. It's too damn hard, and we make it hard because it's it's like a cryptic thing, right? We don't tell them what you know they really have to do. So you mentioned 75% failure, and I think actually the number is a little higher than that. Um, you know, yeah. it varies by agency and maybe even by specialization, but 
still it's it's more than half and it's a lot um and it, and in a, the next five years as we've said we're going to have to have a lot of new people to take the place of the folks who are going to call it quits and go play golf full time so uh what do you think uh, you know not just your book but if 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 there were um training that was intensive and comprehensive and also practical and by the way i've read about half the book myself and it, i would say it's very practical um, because it's like, okay, here's the application. Here's why they're asking the questions. Here's the information they're looking for. And here's how you need to think about answering the questions. That's eminently practical. Um, what can the failure rate be turned down to in your view? So uh, from 90%, 75% to what? Oh, huh. yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, the, the agent's role is twofold. Uh, you have to be willing to talk, right? You can't be afraid of people. Uh, I think if you empower them with the knowledge and understanding of what they're doing and give them tools that they can make a difference, then you'll help with the confidence. Because a lot of that is just confidence mm -hmm. uh, and being confident. Um, and you can kind of learn uh, how to handle objections and, and those sorts of things. And again, it comes with knowledge and, and experiences. And this is where a mentor, um, can can really really be helpful, but you know if we're getting if we're getting a candidate that's that's not afraid of people, yeah, you know, I would think seventy five percent should make it, not fail. So flip it around, okay? Yeah, I, I think it would be a a total flip. But but again, remember your time frame, and you're right on. It took me six years to get to a hundred thousand in commission volume. So you're, you're right on the money. And it wasn't because it wasn't motivated. Right. Uh, it wasn't because I didn't want to do it. Um, I was hungry. I was starving. I could have quit many, many times because it's very, very frustrating. But I'm just that particular type of person that says, well, the harder it is, the harder I'm going to go at it. Um, but it, it's too long. It's too long. So, so one of the big challenges, it seems to me, for the future, for the next few years, in fact, um, in the agency business, first of all, um, agencies are getting bigger and bigger because they're getting gobbled up, and that that's hollowing out the middle. And it's and the, those big agencies have a lot of money to pour resources, which mean that that the agencies that are left, the local agencies like yourself, but uh, at your agency there in Lexington have got to um, generate more profit dollars to pay for capability to compete. Okay, I think that seems to be a given. So um, one of the, and if, and if at the same time, they have to spend a lot of money training employees, and, and frankly, that's what every agency that's gonna be in business is faced with, whether it's a CSR or a commercial lines producer, they're, you know, you, you, can't, you can't thrive now, and you certainly can't do it in the future, just stealing other people's employees, it doesn't work. So you gotta train, gotta train them yourself. I remember going to a dynamics of sales management class 25 years ago now. And in that uh, long ago uh, course, a bunch of really smart people sat around a room and calculated that uh, we thought it cost about $100,000 a year to train a uh, commercial lines producer and there was a 90% failure rate. So yeah. when you start doing the math, that's a huge amount of capital that has to be invested in somebody to get them to the place you already did. So it seems to me, and I would just, I'm guessing you agree, that uh, over the next three to five years, one of the biggest challenges for our industry isn't just replacing people, but it's getting them up to speed so they can actually do the work. Yeah, that's actually been the problem. Too many people have done the math figure we got to bring them up to speed quicker because it's expensive and taking shortcuts. Um, and so they fail even more. Um, we, we have budgeted a half million dollars this year to hire new people. Um, very much against my will. I'd rather we, we said a half million dollars hired two people and thought about that as a three or four year expenditure. Um, try to hire the right people and train them correctly. See what's happening now, the 100,000 then, 25 years ago, what's 200,000 now? Right. Unless they quit sooner. But if they quit sooner, will we lose all of it? Right. Um, it's a very, very expensive proposition, but it's, it's an investment and it's an important one because without producers, there are no agencies right. uh, whatsoever. Um, 
so you have you have to buck up. You know, you, you have to realize that it's going to cost you money. Um, but you also have to realize that the, the first people that we have to educate are, are the owners of agencies and the insurance companies and say, look, we got to start doing something different. Um, I really think that that we spend and we waste. We've lost well over a million dollars in the last 10 years hiring people that aren't here anymore that we we've, we've paid for. You know, if we if we did spend more money in their education and and the and the planning and given them the proper amount of time, we may have spent a million dollars, but we might have five producers here that are now returning uh, on that investment that eventually within seven years, we're making money on it. Um, so the, the short term dollars are what people are focused on, not the long term. They're not looking out down the road and have a very good understanding of what the true investment costs are, um, are necessary let's say. So, you know, on that point, I mean, you did a lot of research before you wrote your book and you did a lot of thinking about it, obviously. And I'm curious, you know, um, as you think about this, this cost issue and this investment, as you, as you described it, uh, that we've got to make, if we spend a hundred thousand dollars as an industry, um, compensating a new producer. Okay. How much should we, be spending on training that individual. So, you know, is it 20% of, uh, of the total salary costs, 50%, is it 100%? Help us come to grips with what the real expense is here or the real investment. The 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 training costs are minimal. Uh, the book costs $225. Okay. All right. Uh, and you've read it. Uh, it's practical. It's readable. I mean, I read it for someone that doesn't know anything about insurance. That's why it's over 134,000 words. It's not because I like to talk, because I had to type it. Now, if I could talk it, it would be longer, but I had to type it and I hate typing. So, so that's, I mean, I typed every word in there more than once, uh, unfortunately. Um, the training cost is only high because it's the salaries included, okay? okay. If you include salary and training costs, then, it, then it's high, that's, but it's investment. You take away the salary and the training cost is minimal. It's minimal. I mean, like I said, the book's $225. If you have people like me and all agencies do, uh, they have competent people. Well, they can mentor them. There's no cost, you know, really to that. Um, so the training cost is on, honestly, it's a salary. It's a salary and the benefits and, and those sorts of things. The cost not to teach them the right things, not to buy a $225 book and not spend the time to teach them that that's the problem. That's the problem. We're not, you know, we sent them to Hartford school and I forgot what it was, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. Great information, way too much. I mean, that's training costs and that's pissed away, honestly. Um, we have to think about how we're training and what we're training. Uh, these individuals and not expect too much too soon. That's our biggest problem. So um, that's interesting, not expect too much too soon. So the average producer validates in about three years and validation, you know, I think everybody listening probably knows, but just to define our terms, validation happens when the producers, uh, Comp the, the commission in the producer's book of business equals their salary. It doesn't mean they're make, you're making money on them yet. It just means you broke, you know, you cross. You're not them. losing any anymore. <laughs> That's right. You cross the Rubicon. So, so it's a yeah. three year, three year process. And yeah. um, so, you know, three years puts us right in the middle of our forecasted period of time. We're looking at three to five years out. And, and we know that there's going to be fewer agencies because of the acquisitions um, and so forth. Uh, you know, you're competing uh, in your market uh, with all kinds of other producers, both good and bad, and you're paying a lot of attention to the future because you just wrote a book on how to help somebody get into this business and succeed. I am curious, uh, do you think we're going to have fewer commercial producers in five years than we do today? Um, you know, are we going to have the same number? And if we have fewer 
Um, does that imply that more producers are going to have to handle bigger books of business and therefore be even sharper than they are now? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I wish you'd have mailed that to me beforehand. I would, could have you know, thought about it some more. Um, well, I would, I would think that we will have fewer producers because um, I can handle a much larger book and I have a much larger book because of the, the, the technolo technological advances. Um, you know, they, they enable me. Um, see, when I, when I started, right, and I'm not that old, I, I can't handle, you know, this, this great, but, uh, you know, 58 this month, so I, I'm not ready to die, okay. Anyway. You're, 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 you're in the middle of your career. I'm, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm hitting my stride, right? Um, you know, when I started out, uh, I had to drive to see people. We didn't have fax machines. We didn't have emails. I had to go meet them face to face, pick up their policies. If, if they let me, some of them would say, well, there's a copier. If they had one, I'd make hand notes. You know, I can write a policy without the policy. I know what questions to ask them because we had to do that. Um, and fax machines and, and emails and all this, it changed the pace and it quickened it and quickened it and quickened it, which for me was good because I knew what to do with it. I knew how to take advantage of it. Uh, some people starting out, they had all this information, it was all there, but they didn't, they didn't know what to do with it. So in the future, as these things continue, you know, people think that insurance companies are stodgy and we don't change bullshit. I've been here for 34 years. We do a lot of changing. I mean, all the time. Uh, we love technology. We love information. We love doing things faster and, and cutting our overhead and our costs. So, so yes, it can be done with fewer people, but they got to be smart. They got to know what they're doing. Um, they have to be more educated. We probably have 25 or 30% of dead wood now. You know, uh, the other thing you have to have to think about is, is that there a lot of producers could get to the level I am, but they won't because they stop themselves because they get comfortable because they don't want to work any harder. They don't want to learn anymore. They're at that threshold, right? That, you know, when, when is this enough? Okay. Well, I'll think I'll coast a little while. Oh, hell, I lost some accounts. Now I got to go sell, right? They get comfortable. Um, you know, you'll always have some of that, but I think we just got too many people in the mix that aren't quite cutting it. They're just hanging on by a thread or two. And it's not that they don't want to, it's just we haven't showed them how. Right. Um, and I think that's going to change. That's what I've done to try and help the future. This book is my legacy. This is my effort to give back something to an industry that has been very good to me. Um, you know, I'll, I'll fall short of saying I love it because half the day I want to pull all my damn hair out, right? It makes you crazy. I mean, this is craziness. Um, but I did want to give something back. And, and so, yes, I think we'll have fewer um, people, but they've got to be better. And they've got to be smarter, um, you know, because we can, we can see more clients now. We don't have to drive and see them. We can Zoom. Oh, my God, 2020 has been great. I mean, I never did any of this. Wouldn't even think about doing any of this. And it's really been pretty wildly embraced. Um, Just curious, but, I mean, you know, on that topic, are you planning to uh, increase your geographic radius uh, with Zoom? I mean, you're going to be able to see people further away and, and, and grow your book that way? No. Um, uh, probably not. For that resource now you know i i talked with the insurance carrier and they they had me up last year and it was an interesting conversation because they actually put us in front of um all the underwriters and said okay what's it like being an agent and i almost fell on the floor i was like why are we just now having this conversation uh and of course i want to know well what's it like to be an underwriter we're not we're not opposites right we're not in competition we're supposed to be partners and, and it was a great you know, conversation. But one of the things I told him, I said, stop coming to see me. I want you in your office. Right. We're, we, got, we got to be moving. Well, this 
scenario makes because they're in Indianapolis or they're in Cincinnati or, you know, they're, they have to get in the car and there's four or five dead hours, you know, coming and going where they could be working. Well, we can do this instead. Um, you know, with my clients, uh, and I have a lot of them, so I'm, I'm, I'm referral only, right? You, you know, I'm not hunting anymore. Well, I am, I, I can't give that up. I mean, once, once you hunt, you hunt, but, um, you know, I'm more interested in how I can do things better. Not, not necessarily more. I'm solidifying things and, you know, that's one of the other tough parts about being an agent. You cannot get the time with a client that you need to, to discover everything. So you have to figure out pretty quick what you have to know and use an economy, uh, if you will, uh, of their time because their time is not about writing insurance policies. Their time is about building a bridge, you know, right. manufacturing a widget, whatever it is that they may do. So, you know, if you do it right, you'll perfect the policy over three, four, five years where you can have those little conversations at, at different parts. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's difficult to do. So, um, you know, more quality honestly, at, at this point for me, um, there's many people that got to get some quantity before they can worry too much sure. about that. Well, and it's clear that, you know, in the next few years, we're going to have a lot of, um, of you know, people turning over a lot of turmoil in the industry. Um, lots of new folks coming in and, yeah. uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, mentoring, and I'm sure you're going to be involved in more of that as you go along, just like every other successful agent has, uh, has done. And so um, just as we wrap up um, quickly, any any last thought on the future of, of our business, where we're headed the next three or four years you want to share? Well, there will be agents. Um, you know, I like I said, I did a little research before I came on because I'm going to talk about the insurance and insure tech and all that. And um, so I, I looked online, I was curious to see how much retail sales, just all products were sold, uh, e-commerce. And I found a site and, uh, and I'll make this fun, right? How much do you think of, of the U.S. retail is sold over the internet? What percentage? Uh, 27. Okay. Uh, until last year, it was running about 9.9%. With COVID in the last quarter, uh, the third quarter rather, they don't have didn't have the last quarter. It's a little too fresh. It was 14.9 percent. There was another statistic on there, and they asked uh, Gen Z, right? These are the people that you know we've trained from go to be on their phone, all right? And they asked them what they thought, and it was about 83 percent. They said we want to do 83 percent of our you know sales and business. And we, we just hired a, an intern to help us with our, you know, our, our, our Facebook stuff and all that crap. And, um, and I asked her, she's a senior at, in college. And she said, well, she thought 80% of, of sales. And then I started asking her, well, what do you buy? You know, do you buy dresses? Do you buy, you know, what do you go out? Well, no, it wasn't 80%. So the, the thought is it's much, much higher, but in actuality, it's, much, much lower, even for consumer goods, right? Things that are nowhere near as complicated as an insurance policy. Um, again, it's a legal contract. I, I like the attorneys saying, right? The, the person that represents them, themselves in court has a fool for an attorney. Well, it's the same thing, you know? You, you know so I don't, I don't believe that, um, that tech's going to take over. I think it's going to do the same things it's been doing for the last 30 years and just enhancing what we do and give us more tools and hopefully help educate our clients a little bit. But honestly, they don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to know what their policy says and God forbid, you know, read it. Well, uh, I think so that's uh, so <laughs> that's an optimistic note on, on uh, which to finish up, which is, you know, the same thing that I hear across the industry, which is, 
Uh, we need agents. Uh, we've always needed agents, and we still need agents in the future. The, the trick's going to be getting enough agents trained up quickly enough. And so, uh, you know, Jeff, thank you for writing the book. I think it's a great contribution to the industry. I would encourage anyone who um, is listening to pick up a copy and, and see how it can help you in your agency and um, help develop more super producers like Jeff McIntosh from Lexington, Kentucky. Jeff, thanks for being with me today. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm talking to independent agency owners about this all the time. If you'd like to have a more personalized conversation, click on the button or the link in the description and we'll make that happen. You can also reach out to me at tonycaldwell.net slash contact.